Hello, you're watching Armando Hasurungan, biology and medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, visit Facebook Armando Hasurungan without a space. Like, ask questions, answer questions, and please post some interesting things such as your artwork. And you can also change the settings to HD or original for better graphics. This video is on eye disorders and various eye conditions um, and diseases and yeah, eye disorders. So I'll first I'd like to begin by um, showing you how normal vision works, also known as emitropia. So here we have an eyeball, the lens, and at the back of the eyeball we have the retina, our photoreceptors, that receive light and send them to the brain. Light comes into our eyes this way, and the lens refracts the light and focuses the light onto the back of the retina, where it then passes the information onto the optic nerve and to the brain. So that's how normal vision works. However, there are eye conditions known called farsightedness or hyperopia, where the light comes in again and the lens refracts it, but it doesn't focus it at the back, it passes the retina. So the actual focus is past the retina. And so this is known as farsightedness. Another condition called, there is another condition called short sightedness or myopia. And this is the opposite of hyperopia, where light enters the, eye, the eyeball, so light comes in, and the lens refracts it, but refracts it before it hits the retina. And this is under normal circumstances. So let's look at um, hyperopia again and see what, uh, let's look more deeper into it. So hyperopia can be caused um, when the eyeball is too short or the lens are too weak. Basically, what happens, here's the eyeball, and here we have the lens. Ciliary muscles help the lens to accommodate, to visualize objects. So, an object at a far distance, for hyperopia people, they can see it normally. However, as the objects come closer to the eye, the ciliary muscles will contract. The ciliary muscles will contract to a point where it cannot focus the image anymore. And this is hyperopia. You can't see images close by. So another analogy, here we have the ciliary muscles and the lens. Now to overcome hyperopia, the ciliary muscles will contract to increase the lens strength to visualize the image. However, there is a point where the ciliary muscles cannot contract any longer and so the image cannot be formed close by. Next, let's look at myopia. And myopia is a condition where objects far away cannot be seen properly because when the ciliary muscles are relaxed, the light refracting, uh, reflecting off the object does not focus properly on the retina. However, through accommodation with the lens and ciliary muscles, closer objects can be easily visualized. Now, the next eye condition or disorder is, is known as astigmatism. And it is where light will normally come in However, the refraction from the lens, it does not all um, end up at the same area at the back of the retina. So light rays bend unevenly and do not come to a single focus on the retina. Um, unequal curvature of the cornea can cause astigmatism. The next eye disorder is uh, conjunctivitis. And here's the eyeball again. Now the, and the lens and the blood supply. And so conjunctivitis. The conjunctiva is the outermost membrane of the eyeball. Conjunctivitis is inflammation of the conjunctiva, basically, and it can be caused by many things, such as allergy, allergic reaction, chemical irritants, virus, and also some strains of bacteria, certain bacteria. Trachoma, also known as granular conjunctivitis, is a leading cause of um, blindness from infections. And it's caused by poor hygiene, where a bacteria known as chlamydia trachomatis can cause trachoma. And that is why trachoma is sometimes known as 
uh, chlamydial conjunctivitis. A normal eye, a normal eye will just look something like this, pretty poor diagram, but a, a person suffering from conjunctivitis will have the feature of redness in the eyeball. Next disorder are cataracts. And here we have the eyeball again. Light, as we know, comes in. So light comes in and goes to our lens. Cataract is a problem with the lens. So if you look at this lens, a cataract is based essentially when the le lens, certain proteins denature in the lens. And the denaturation of these proteins will then cause cloudy or opaque areas to be formed. Now these cloudy and opaque areas will cause light to be re refracted distortedly everywhere, scattered around. So light is scattered across the retina. And what this causes then is vision impairment and blurry vision. And this is what cataract is. Now the common feature of cataract, if we look at a two eyes, one normal, one um, with, with cataracts. So the normal eye will look like this. The pupil will be black. However, persons suffering from cataracts will have a cloudy pupil, so grayish color. Uh, next I'll talk about two diso eye disorders, pap papil papilledema and glaucoma. And I'm only gonna, I'm gonna talk about them separately because they're different, but I'm going to use the same diagram to show um, the characteristics of this, this eye disorder. So here we have the eyeball, ciliary muscles, the blood supply, and here I'll draw the nerve. It connects with the retina. Now, pipil edema is essentially edema and inflammation of the optic nerve, which is formed by the retina with other cells around there. And what this causes, edema and inflammation, what, what it can cause is it can cause um, nerves around the area um, to be compressed by the pressure and edema and inflammation. And what this does, it blocks nutrition flow to the retina, which can lead to vision impairment and even blindness. Now the causes of papilledema, um, there are three causes, I'd say. There's increased cranial pressure, which can cause it. Um, a condition known as retrobulbar neuritis, and also changes in retinal blood pressure can cause papilledema. Now, number one, the increased cranial pressure is actually the cause of glaucoma, which is our next eye disorder. And glaucoma is a leading cause of blindness, one of the main leading causes of blindness. And to know what glaucoma is, let's just look at a normal eye, because it's to do with pressure. So normal eye here with normal pressure, Slurry muscles again, optic nerve. So in a normal eye, the normal intraocular pressure, the pressure in the visceral humor is 12 to 20 millimeters mercury. So this is normal. However, in a, in a person, uh, a person suffering from glaucoma can have pressure up to 60 to 70 millimeters mercury. Even 25 to 30 millimeters mercury can cause severe damage, which is typical of glaucoma, and it can cause the nerves to be compressed by pressure and block nutrition flow, like papilledema. And glaucoma is caused by the block in drainage of the fluid, and so fluid builds up, causing the increase in pressure. Um, retinal, retinal disc detachment is another condition that causes damage to the retina, and it, and it, can, and it can cause visual impairment and blindness as well. So what is retinal detachment? Here we have the eye again, the lens, the ciliary muscles. Retinal detachment is essentially, the retina is located here, and retinal detachment is essentially when the retina basically peels off the back. So here the retina, the retina is peeling off. And it can be caused by an injury where the fluid, the vitreous humor, can leak in and f or blood can accumulate here which will peel off the retina from the back. Also, hemorrhage can cause this. Next, there is um, alterations in ocular movement. 
And alterations in ocular movement basically means when there's damage to the cranial nerves, certain cranial nerves, especially cranial nerve 3, the ocular motor, nerve 4, trochlea, and nerve 6, the abducens nerve. And it can cause, damage to these nerves can cause three major problems. Um, a condition known as um, strabismus, which is essentially, I'll draw it out, when the pupils don't, when they're focused straight, they're not in the same um, axis. So one can face medially while one faces in front. Second condition that can cause is nystagmus, which is involuntary unilateral or bilateral movement. When your eyes basically shake from side to side, or one or two. One of the eyes or both of the eyes. Involuntary move. And the third condition can be from paralysis of individual extraocular muscles by the uh, which each of these cranial nerves um, supply. So damage to these para paralysis of these individual extraocular muscles can cause limited abduction, um, amongst many other things, and abnormal closure of the eye. The last thing I want to talk about is retinopathies. And there are many retinopathies caused by um, other um, conditions, such as systemic hypertension, diabetes, and retinal ischemia. And these are only some. So that concludes our well, this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like, comment, give feedback, and subscribe, please. Uh, thank you.